It's been a remarkable thing over the last few weeks to see how a little virus, smaller than the human eye can see, has been able to demoralize and shut down the world economy. And it reminded me of the story of the Philistines back in 1 Samuel, where they had stolen the Ark of God and they brought it down to Ashdod and put it in the house of Dagon. And you remember how the Lord determined to humble the Philistines. They're always spoken of as being big men like Goliath. And we might think, well, the way to bring them to their knees would be an earthquake or a tornado. But God said, well, no, I think just a few mice in their garners will do it and strike them with hemorrhoids. And I think how often God knows how to humble people in ways that are themselves humbling. Now, God knows how to humble us without humiliating us. Just tell you a little story. When I was out traveling in one of my first gospel teams with a group of young men in North Dakota, and Brother Llewellyn Tewksbury and I were going door to door in Washburn over in the western side of the state, we came to a couple, an old couple living in this small home, and they invited us in. As we spoke with them, I asked them, did they believe in God? And the old man said, oh, I certainly do believe in God. He said, when I was a boy, the folks around here were sodbusters, and we had virtually nothing to entertain ourselves with, but there was an old fellow in the town, on the outskirts of town, and he was an infidel, and our mothers warned us, do not go near that man. But he was a great storyteller, and we would sneak in, and he had a very simple cabin with a window on either side, and a door on the front, and a stove on the back. And he would sit in his rocking chair, and he would rock and tell us stories, and we'd sit in a little semicircle on the floor listening to his stories. And on one occasion, we could hear a storm rolling in, and suddenly there was a tremendous clap of thunder and a bolt of lightning, and it must have hit a tree just on the edge of the clearing and split the tree in two. And the infidel, rocking in his chair, he had one foot crossed over the other, he was wearing cowboy boots, and as he was sitting there, he said, shoot again, old man. That was a close one. And he said, a bolt of lightning came through one window of that cabin and blew the heel right off that man's boot and went out the other window between us and this infidel. And he said, from that moment on, I never doubted that there was a God in heaven. <laughs> And, you know, I think it's important for us in these days to realize how quickly our society has said, well, we can do this, we're strong enough, you know, we'll just stand together, we'll solve the problem. But in actual fact, that's all bluster and bravado. We've just heard that the leaders of one of the great countries of the free world is now in the hospital with this disease. And we realize that we are thoroughly dependent on God in a day like this. So God help us to renew our confidence in him and to speak for him when we have opportunities to remind people there is a God in heaven. And I love the words of Nahum 1 7, the Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knows those who trust in him.